Hello everyone, today, we will discuss about types of probability distributions, their characteristics, examples and graphs. In this lecture we will examine most frequently used distributions, their characteristics and practical situations where they can be used. In next lecture, we will discuss each one of them in detail. In fact, we have a dedicated lecture on each of the distribution. So, let's start. Certain distributions share some of the key characteristics so we can group them together. Some like rolling of die or picking of card from deck has finite number of outcomes so they can be called as discrete distributions. That is, they can have one of the few values possible, like getting number 1 on die or number 2 on die and so on. Number can be either 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6 nothing else. Whereas some like recording of time or distance can have many outcomes, like distance covered can be 1.1, 1 1.12, 1 1 1.112 and so on. So they are called continuous distribution. Let's look at some of the discrete distribution. First one is uniform distribution. Here all outcomes are equally probable. Example, probability of getting heads on a coin is same as probability of getting tail on a coin. Same way, probability of drawing a king from pack of card is same as probability of drawing a queen. Second one is Bernoulli distribution. Here only two outcomes are possible, that is either true or false or either yes or no or either success or failure. Difference from previous distribution is that probability of both outcome may not be same. For example, we have to pick a class monitor from a class having seven native students and three international students. We assign class monitor to be native is true and monitor being international as false. In other words, we assign class monitor to be native is yes and monitor being international as failure. Now outcome can only be true or false, we have a Bernoulli distribution. If we carry out same experiment several times in a row then we have a binomial distribution which is the third distribution that we will discuss here. Just like Bernoulli, we have two outcomes, but many iterations. For example, flipping a coin can result in either heads or tails, but if we flip a coin three times in a row and try to calculate likelihood of getting heads twice. Just a reminder, we are just giving introduction to all the common distributions but in next lecture, we will see how to perform actual calculations. Fourth one is Poisson distribution. It is used to estimate frequency of an event in a given interval. For example, Sachin Tendulkar scores on average 45 runs per innings, then how likely he will score 30 runs in say first half of next inning. Since we are not talking of full innings, Hence, probability needs to be adjusted and this is where Poisson distribution helps. Now, let's move to continuous distributions. With continuous distribution, probability distribution will be a curve. Unlike the case of discrete distribution where it was unconnected individual bars. First one is normal distribution which is by far the most commonly used distribution because most of the events in nature closely resembles this distribution. For example, weight of polar bear is generally around 500 kilograms, but depending on its individual species, it can be as low as 350 kg or as high as 700 kg. Same is case with height of humans or marks of class, they all closely resembles normal distribution. Most values will be concentrated around its mean. Extreme values that are rare are also called outliers. Sometimes we cannot get data of whole population and have to work with limited data also called as sample data. 
In such cases we use student t distribution. It can also be considered as small sample approximation of normal distribution. For example, looking at weight of last 10 polar bears that were cited. Lower sample size can result in fatter tail, that is ratio of extreme values to values near mean can be higher. Next continuous distribution that we will discuss is chi squared distribution. It is a asymmetric distribution as it consists of only non-negative values. Because of this characteristic chi square may not often mirror natural events but it finds its usage heavily in financial data analysis. For example, a share price can never be negative, at worst it can be zero and in general it will always be a positive value. Next continuous distribution and the last one for today is exponential distribution. It is used in case of events that are rapidly changing. For example, number of views on a recent breaking news will grow rapidly but as time passes and that news becomes old then it will get very few views as it becomes irrelevant or interest dies off. Alright everyone, that's all for today's lecture. Hope this has given you good foundation for detailed lectures on each one of the distribution. Do subscribe, like and share if you found our content helpful. Thank you.